I can't understand that. A little later on in the show, we're going to watch Honky Tonk Wayne and Ron Starr against Leo Burke and Hubert Gallant. This will be a non-title match, as I understand it, but and just as exciting, I'm sure, will be the debut of the Good News Allen against Kerry Brown. Look out for this again. Knocks his man down, gave him the full chest, gets it in return himself. Hey, that Benoit, he can pitch and he can catch, can't he? Doing a little catching right now. Yes, he is. Oh. He's hung up on the ropes. You want some of that Patterson, well, he has to get into that ring because Benoit's in trouble. Turn around. Whipped him. Beautifully done. Nice maneuver. Benoit goes after him, then gets tripped up. Tag, there it is. Now oh, here comes Rick Patterson. Goes after him off and jams him in that corner and will drive him across the ring. Over the top. Patterson, very anxious to get into that ring, now takes advantage of Luke. Slam that punch in there. Big hip toss. He's going to ride a cowboy. Gee, he's throwing that butch mop around like he's just a small little sack of potatoes. And he gives it to Mike Hammer. Hammer will come in against Patterson. those ropes now. Good maneuver. Carter's man Nappy. Rick Patterson, I like this fighter. The Minnesota Marauder takes this man down, covers one, two, it's broken up by Moffat totally illegally, I might add. That looked like about a two and three quarters again, Ed. Abdominal stretch. Can they keep Moffat out of there? I think not. You were using the crystal ball there, Ed. <laughs> I'll tell you, young Benoit will have to keep Moffat out of there to prevent the interference. Now he turns up for the Boston Crab. Is he ever giving it to Hammer? Boston Crab. Tag, it's Benoit. Benoit banging away at that big man. We're, look out now. Both corners are active. And we're going to have a meeting of the minds if there are any there. No, they got turned around. What happened? Pulled them over. It's a one, two, three. Beautiful. What a move. Hey, we got to watch that in slow motion. Some great maneuvering there. A by the Benoit Patterson a, combination. A beautiful move by Chris Benoit, turning him around, small packaging him, and it's all over. Well, Chris Benoit making his debut in pro wrestling. I'm not saying this because you're standing in front of me. I thought you did a terrific job. How do you feel? Thank you very much, Mr. Whelan. It's felt great to have a my first match win. And what is this? What is this? Hey, kid. I like your style, I like the way you wrestle. I think you're gonna make a, a big name for yourself. How would you like to join JR's army? I don't have nothing to do with that. Mr. Minnow, what, what, what is this? <laughs> oh! Foley, you jerk! What are you doing up here? Shut up, Mr. Sure. Whalen! Keep on! Well, this is idiotic. Idiotic. Get somebody in here. See what happens, Mr. Whalen, when they don't join jail. Oh, terrific. Terrific. Get out of here.
Well, I have a look now at the Cobra and the Cuban Assassin. This is one falls, 30 minute time limit, nearing the five minute mark. The Cobra out of Uganda at 222, the Assassin nine pounds heavier from Havana, Cuba. The Cobra, I think you've observed in the first few minutes here, Jim Davies, is a very agile competitor. He's got a lot of fine moves. He's fast on his feet. Apparently, he's got a running feud with the Great Gamma. He apparently, uh, there was a little fire routine that the Great Gamma tried to pull on him, wound up blowing up in Great Gamma's face, sidelined him for several weeks last year. Yes, and I... <laughs> I couldn't help but notice that Gamma, Gamma was nowhere to be seen tonight. Nowhere. By the way, uh, Ed, I've got the letter of the week to Stampede Wrestling. It says, Dear Friend Bruce, I've been a fan of yours for quite a few years. Want you to know that your fans support you 100%. Too bad you were suspended, but I know if you get a rematch with the great Gamma, you'll beat them fairly. Good luck from your fan, Claude Follis. And it says, P.S. I think you and Dan Crawford should team up and beat the so-called champs, the cowardly, cheating, poor sports, honky-tonk man and rotten Ron star for the international tag team belts. Letters can be addressed to Stampede Wrestling, Box 7323, Station E, Calgary T3C, 3M2. What is that? The cowardly, cheating, poor sports? I mean, can you believe that? I find that hard. Cuban assassin against the Cobra. Cuban is beginning to dish a little bit of it out. The Cobra is very adept. Incidentally, you mentioned that Gamma pulled that routine a couple of years ago. He was trying to emulate what the Cobra can do. He is capable, I've seen it a couple of times, of shooting fire out of his fingers. I, I don't know what it's all about, but uh, I've seen it happen. It's an interesting trick if you can do it. Actually, I think the wrong man is wearing a mask in this boat. The Cuban assassin looks like his face is ridden on the rim for the last 10 miles. <laughs> You're terrible. That wasn't very charitable, no, I admit, Ed. That's not charitable. I mean, beautiful isn't everything. Ugly can be everything. <laughs> and it is, in the Cuban's case. <laughs> Oh, man. The Cobra having a lot of trouble getting back in the ring. Cuban seems to get after him every time he tries to make a move to get back. The Cobra out of Uganda, and that's a place where a few years ago, I haven't heard in the last two or three years, but a few years back, this program was the number one show in Uganda, Stampede Wrestling. Back then, the only two names they knew in Uganda were... Idi Amin and Ed Whalen. Boy, don't team me with that. Anyway, the Cobra having all sorts of problems, as you mentioned. He's going to make it this time. Look at that kick. Now, this is a guy you can't play games with. He's got a lot of moves. Whoops. He needed one there. Whoa! Boy, two plus. That was pretty close. The Cobra seems to be uh, a PKA karate man, waving those boots around. Good scrapper. I like him. He's gonna go the aerial route. Those ropes look got daddy. He got him beautifully. Time that drop kick and covers. It's a two. It's a no, he's up on the ropes. Hearing the 10 minute mark, the veteran Tommy Carr is always our timekeeper. I think I hate to say this with children watching, but I think that there the assassin cheated. He's got something in his hand. Tusk, tusk. He comes in with a hardware store in his pockets, that Cuban assassin. Out of the ring goes the Cobra. 
He spent a lot of time out there. Run ball, 30 minute time limit. Nearing 10 minutes. It was interesting, before the bow dead, referee Wayne Hart did a thorough search of the Cobra, and yet uh, the Cuban assassin with the hardware store in his pocket seemed to emerge unscathed from the search. Well, there's a yellow one card. Yellow card for the Cuban, one yellow card. Cuban assassin gets a yellow. And as wrestling fans are aware, you get two yellow cards, the third one is a red card, and you're out of there. We're at the 10 minute mark. As this show is taking place, it's a bitterly cold winter night in Calgary. I'm amazed that anybody among the fans braved the terrible conditions. Now off those ropes, Cuban once again, and oh. You know, the Cuban has got his own cheering section there. Oh, look at that. Good move. Got him with a kick. Goes after his man in the corner. He's got the Cuban on Strange Street. Well, I thought he did. Look at that maneuver. Off those ropes. Oh, what? Oh, what an exhibition. And there's your winner. The Cobra. Stampede Wrestling is coming to the Vancouver PNE Gardens Wednesday, December 11th at 7.30 p.m. There will be a tag team bout between Ron Starr and Honky Tonk Wayne against Hubert Gallant and Leo Burke for the international belt. Bad News Allen will be taking on Kerry Brown. There will be a street fight match between Bruce Hart and the Great Gamma. And, of course, we got the ladies, Desiree Peterson versus Rhonda Singh. We're here with Bruce Hart and Bad News Allen. Bad News, you're taking on Kerry Brown. Yes, I'd just like to say one thing first, that my good friend Bruce Allen, who's promoting this match out here, he sent for me. I haven't been in this area in a long time, and he wants me to clean up the garbage, and I'm going to start with the Cabbage Patch Kid, Carrie Brown. I mean, this man has double-crossed me. He's done everything under the sun to try to hurt me, but I guarantee you, Mr. Brown, that when you're in there with the ring with me, you know I can wrestle by the rules, or I can break the rules just as well as you can. I also, let me uh, say one thing, that my good friend over here, Bruce Hart, He's in there with that Gamma Singh, and this is going to be a street fight. As you people know, I'm from Harlem, and that's the number one place of street fighting. When you come out of there, you know it all. And I'm teaching this man here all the dirty tricks that he knows and a little bit that I know, and this will teach Mr. Gamma a little lesson. Thanks very much. We're here with Kerry Brown, Rotten Ron Starr, and Honky Tonk Wayne. Don't forget, Ellie Mae, look at this fine look fur coat. We purchased this after we defeated Dynamite Kid and David Boy right. Smith right there in Vancouver. We went and took that money we made for that match. We bought this woman a fur coat. I'm going to put her in some diamond rings. It. We're going to have her riding in limousines. You know what I'm talking about. We're going to have this woman doing everything we want. <laughs> Hey, you don't know, Vancouver, we might even bring Miss Ellie out there with us next time. Now let's get down to some business. Vancouver p &E Garden, 7.30, December the 11th. It's supposedly being put up by J.R. Foley to Mike Shaw, Jim Shaw can defeat Dan Crawford. There's Crawford answering the bounty nonsense as we go past the five minute mark. One ball, 30 minutes. Shaw, the big man, and that's pretty obvious in that ring, is it not? He's at 320 out of Saginaw, Michigan. Crawford at 235 from Vancouver is outweighed by 85 pounds, but of course he has that speed and he has great ability. You're right, Ed, when you mention the size of Mike Shaw. He's the answer to the musical question, where's the beef? 
<laughs> That's right. It's all right there. 320 pounds. Rod Hager is the referee. J.R. Foley doing a little screaming on the public address system here. We could rent him out as an air raid siren. I think you're right. Foley, of course, is looking for some revenge. Profit double-crossed him, took a lot of Foley's money, and now with Mike Shaw in there, he's looking for Porky's revenge. An interesting scenario out there at ringside. Kerry Brown and J.R. Foley are watching Dan Crawford, but also watching is Bill Cody, who used to be a tag team partner back when. Bill Cody has been retired for some time, I believe. He was having a good close look and making sure that there was no fooling around. Dan Crawford said he needed somebody to watch his back in this boat. And obviously, he's right. And he's fired up out here. He's pounding on the table. Oh, he hit him right on that bread basket. Look at him go! Gets him a shot to the midsection. is starting to play hardball in there, Ed. He has got J.R. Foley on the edge of nervous exhaustion outside the ring. All of a sudden, Shaw doesn't look so tough, does he? The one thing about Crawford, Ed, as you know, this man has determination. You pretty well have to Put him in a cement overcoat to uh, try and get him. Oh! You got a lamp full of Mike Shaw almost. Yellow card. Yellow card being short against Crawford. He's, I've got Mike Shaw right on top of me, and I'll tell you, not a pretty sight. having difficulty getting into the ring. Gee, we were kind of part of that for just a moment there, Ed. Profit really in control. Whoops, did I speak too soon? It's a slugfest in there. Slugfest is right, Jim. Kerry Brown and J.R. Foley giving some consolation, a couple words of advice to make sure, but he's going to need something more than advice. You're watching Dan Crawford and Mike Shaw. One fall, 30-minute time limit. We've gone past the 10-minute mark. Come on, Mike Shaw, there's two-thirds of dollars at stake. Bernie money. Two-thirds of dollars, get rid of him. Once again, that was J.R. Foley sounding off. That guy could have the last word with an echo. This is a second yellow card. Shaw goes after him outside that ring. Well, they're just flailing away at each other. I think they're both going to be counted out. The rate things are going. Yes, they are. It is over. It's over. Okay, it'll go into the record books as a draw between Mike Shaw and Dan Crawford. 
Dan Crawford, you made somebody pretty unhappy tonight. You, you, that would be John you took Foley, ten, two thousand dollars away from Mike Shaw. And yeah, John Foley is in shock in the dressing room. How could you do that? I'm sorry, Ed, and I'd like to extend. Uh, possibly an invitation to all the viewing audience to send along their good well cards and best wishes to John <laughs> Foley. But I must tell you, first off, several things. One, Bill, Bill Cody, Cody tonight, he offered, Bell. he offered his assistance in my match. I didn't ask him. He came up. I appreciate that very much, Bill. Thank you very much. Bill, it's nice to see you here. I observed while the fight was going on that it was you at ringside. Yeah, well, I come down once in a while and watch the matches, and I've been watching it for the last two or three weeks, and I've... Every time I see Dan Crawford ring, somebody seems to be jumping his back. So I, I figured since I'm here watching his matches, which I enjoy wrestling, I figured I'd ask him if he'd want me in his, in his corner. Because I think I owe him something. We've been tag team partners for many years, and he's helped me out many times since I've been, when I was oh, in trouble. Boy, you guys uh, scaled the heights as a well, tag team combo. I really appreciate him because if there's anyone in the business I would probably trust more than him, I can't think of the person. So consequently, it's really good to have my corner. I want to take this opportunity to thank some people who contacted me from Victoria, British Columbia with regards to this show. They say they watch it out there and wondered if I'm ever coming that way. I'd sure like to think somewhere in the near future. Particular hello to Dick and Ann Tomlin, two kids out there in Victoria who watch it. I got uh, information from uh, Cindy and Paul McKenzie out there in Sanderson. I thank you very much for your regards to how I'm doing here. And I want to say that hopefully I'll be out on the coast one of these days. I look forward to going home as much as I like it here. Okay, good to see you, Dan Crawford, and a special welcome to Bill Cody. Well, again, an unexpected pleasure. It's nice to have Desiree Peterson with us. You know, I was looking your record. You fought a draw with Wendy, Recker, uh, Wendy Richter, the heavyweight champion, or the ladies' champion. I shouldn't call her a heavyweight great fighter. You also own half of the tag team belts, and uh, now you've got a gal hanging around town who's saying nasty things. Rhonda Singh. Well, Rhonda doesn't scare me. She doesn't threaten me. I've been with bigger, and I've been with worse, but... Everybody needs stepping stones once in a while, so we'll have her out and we'll see what happens. But I'd like to say a few other words. She happens to be the North American champion. Since I am here in my hometown, Calgary, Alberta, I would like to win that here, and I would be proud if the fans would come out and cheer me on greatly, because I love the fans, I need the fans, and I want them all to come out. Okay, Desiree, how can they say no to you? <laughs> well, I hope they can't say no, but I want to see them out here, and I'm praying they will come. Okay, Desiree Peterson. Thank you. Thank you. Rhonda Singh in the ring, and I noticed that Desiree Peterson is around. Is there a connection? Well, yes, Ed, there is, actually. It's a very funny connection. I was in Japan, where I am, nor I book out of Japan, and Stu gave me a call, and he says, there's this Desiree Peterson, and she's here, a, a local Calgary girl. I don't think there's any local Calgary people left in Calgary. But he tells me there's this local girl, and she's out here, and she wants to challenge me for my, my, my championship. My, I have a world championship, 4WA world championship, and she's out to challenge me for, for this belt. But, Ed, can you imagine? You've seen this girl come out here. She's like, she's like... Uh, she's like this little pick here. You can pick them off bit by bit. Break her off bit by bit. Now, and you can just crunch her. Like, Ed, Ed this is ridiculous. Like, even, even suggesting that this girl even step in the ring with me. She's half a tag team championship team. Okay, half of one. Yeah. I'm a whole champion. I am not half of nothing. I am whole. I am it. I am the champion. Okay, you know I've been here many times. I've proven myself in rings all over the world. I've just come off a world tour. Right. Okay, and Stu has especially asked me to come here to do this girl a favor. What favor are we asking to do this girl? This poor girl will probably die in the ring with me. I don't, I don't think that's asking a favor of him. All right, Rhonda, you haven't changed. Rhonda Singh. Well, Ed, All right. What can we say? What, what can, can we say? say? Rhonda Singh, okay, there she is. This year, the return of Bad News Allen, New York City, weighing at 263. He's a beautifully built man against Kerry Brown, 272, Kansas City, one fall, 45 minute time limit. Now we have gone just past the two minute mark, and I might mention that Kerry Brown attacked Allen 
when his back was turned as he was getting into the ring. And then when Allen had been thrown outside of the ring, J.R. Foley managed to stick his big nose in there. Never and mind what you say. You saw what Crawford did tonight. Run out the ring so my brother to pull him. Cry, so go. all I can say, I want a lumberjack match next week oh. with my boy. This is war, and it's 3,000 bounty money. 3,000. You get a little frustrated. Get out of here. Bad news, Alan. A real fine athlete in his own right. Into the martial arts. As a matter of fact, he was a competitor in 1976 in the Olympic Games. And in fact, he did uh, teach uh, martial arts to the New York City police force at one time. Absolutely. Bad news, Allen and Kerry Brown. Kerry Brown. Kerry Brown does have a grudge to settle against Bad News Allen. Bad News turned on him when he thought that suddenly he'd found an ally. That was in last week's action. Well, this Allen, I guarantee you, is not about to be pulled. He is not about to be pushed around. Even though he's having difficulty against Brown at this moment, I wouldn't say it was over. It's interesting that Bad News said he would change his tactics once he heard from his grandfather, who said he was kind of ashamed of the way he'd been performing in the ring. Yes, that's what he said earlier in the program. And he's got a pretty good cheering section out here in the crowd, is bad news, Alan. That may be something foreign to him, too. And that claw hole that's being administered by Kerry Brown is another little foreign object he has to deal with. Go, Terry, go! Go, Terry, go! Go, Terry, go! Go, Terry, go! A one-man cheering section for Kerry Brown, J.R. Foley, grabbing the house microphone. Brown gets... Allen out of that ring once again. We're at the five minute mark. Crowd is watching J.R. Foley, who is feigning innocence at ringside, and indeed does not interfere. One fall, 45 minute time limit. Allen comes in to greet him. Allen has yet to really get untracked in this boat, but I'm sure that when he does, Gary Brown will have more than a handful. There we are. There we are! Talk about on track. Don't do it! Get it! Keep on it! No one you think, Mr. Whalen! Here comes the slam. Brown is going up top. Look out, here comes Allen. Gives him a shot to the jaw, tosses him across the ring. Boy, that was a lot of beef to go air freight, wasn't it? It certainly was. He threw that 272 pounder around like he was a little kid. Allen looking determined now, as Allen can. Man is jammed into the corner. Allen still trying to shake off the cobwebs. Goes after him there. Gives him a shot. And again. Look at that strength. He has no problem with that kind of weight at all. Beautiful drop to the throat. Covers one, two. That's all. Allen absolutely in control of it now. All of a sudden, the rough, tough Brown doesn't want any. Interesting to see Kerry Brown begging for mercy. Brown saying he doesn't want to get up, despite the open invitation by Bad News Allen. A lot of debating going on right now. Oh, 
Well, Brown was playing a little possum, but Allen isn't putting up with much of that. Going to drive him off those ropes now. Oh, through the top. Big drop to the throat. One, two, that's all. Give credit to Brown for hanging in there. And Kerry Brown just doesn't want any of Bad News Allen right now. Tough to blame him. Gonna pull him over. Big suplex. Wow. Oh, he's got enormous strength. Covers his man. It's a one, two, just two. Having trouble just finishing him off, putting him away. Brown on all fours now. Turn around. He clotheslined him going by, coming off those ropes. Now it's Allen getting set. Goes up top. Foley grabbed him. Foley grabbed him. Now what are she calling here? That was a red, red card. card. A red card against Foley. Foley and Kerry Brown are disqualified from the whole thing. Kerry Brown was disqualified. That was a bad interview. 9.55. Okay. They needed two of them. They needed two of them, News. Let me tell you people out there, I would expect something from the Cabbage Patch Kid and that derelict manager of his. But I guarantee you one thing, you ain't heard the last of me yet, Carrie Brown. I met you here man to man, one on one. You tried to break every rule in the book, but we're not finished yet. This is only the beginning. Bad news, Allen. Carrie Brown and J.R. Foley. Well, it was a tough assignment. No comment at all, Mr. Whalen. No comment. Listen, of course it was a tough assignment, Whalen. I've been hit by a lot of strong and tough men. And he would rank in the top ten, let me tell you that. He almost rattled my jaw, took it off my head. But I'll tell you what, I got the army behind me, J.R. Foley and his illustrious followers. Now let's just find out how tough you are against two or three. I underestimated your power, man, but I'm not going to let it happen again. When I get my chance again, you better watch your back. You better turn around every corner, every pillar and post, because I'll be there. Looking for the chance and the time when I can get you and get you at a disadvantage, Alan. And I'll finish you just like you tried to do me. Well, you looked a little nervous when he took off that. All I can say is for that little weasel, uh, what they call Cody, Buffalo Cody, next week. That's all he's got is at Army Crawford. But next week, he's going to face Mike Shaw in a lumberjack match. And there's no way out of that ring like he did tonight. Just All don't right. underestimate me, Bad News Allen. You better watch over your shoulder everywhere you go from now on. Everywhere. Right. And Ed Whalen, I beat it from the bottom of my heart. All right. All right. What did you call him? Good news or bad news? Bad news for you. Right. Enough. Enough. The main event, Honky Tonk Wayne and Ron Starr, the North American champions, or rather international champions as the tag team belts go. They're both out of Memphis and like you to know it. Come in with a violin case, they always do, and you know, they look wrapped up and ready, and they are. It's Leo Burke and Hubert Gallant. Burke out of Moncton, New Brunswick, Hubert Gallant, Shediac, New Brunswick. This is one fall with a one-hour time limit. Referee is Rod Hader. We're catching things right at the beginning. Well, we've watched Hockey Talk Wayne and Ron Starr driving most fans bananas. No! They haven't been beaten in a while. They certainly haven't. They call themselves the Memphis Mafia, and they're about as popular in these parts as the Mafia. 
I think you're right there. We look forward next week to seeing Desiree Peterson in this ring against Rhonda Singh. Pretty little girl, that Desiree. She certainly is. I'll hate to miss that. I'll be suffering on the beach in Hawaii, Ed. You devil. I'm sure you'll be suffering. I think Rotten Ron Star is going to get a lot of ring time tonight because I know that Honky Tonk Wayne is hurting. He, he hurt his back this week in, a, in another bout, although he's always a game competitor. Right now, you're watching Leo Burke. Or you might put it this way, Burke at work against Ron Starr. Leo Burke and Hubert Gallant, probably one of the more scientific tag teams that uh, we've seen in these parts for a while. Good arm drag there, pulls him down. And it's Burke very much up top. Now we're picking it up a little bit later, and I'm afraid that he's been cut outside the ring as Hubert Gallant. And I don't know how much of this we're going to show. He was thrown out of the ring, hit his head on the concrete, and Gallant is in bad shape, comes off the ropes, but he is cut up, and Honky Tonk Wayne is simply going after him. Hubert Gallant is a mess, and that blood is going into his eyes. He can hardly see. Well, I don't know that we'll take very much more of this. No, no, that's it. That's it. Now, who's this? You know who it is. It's Bad News Allen. He hammers away at Honky Tonk. Ron Starr attacks him from behind. The both of them going after Bad News. Bad News turns. It's a Pier 6 brawl. Mayhem in there. And they're trying to put a stop to the whole thing. And of course, will be no contest. All three of them. All three of them are clobbered. Bad news. Allen goes to work. Leo Burke goes to work. Look at Allen. Allen cleans the ring out. You can choose frozen beef, or you can choose fresh ground beef. Choose fresh, choose Wendy's. You can choose rehydrated onions among the toppings, or you can choose fresh onions and other fresh toppings. Choose fresh, choose Wendy's. You can choose a hamburger kept warm under heat lamps, or you can choose a hamburger served fresh, hot off the grill. Choose fresh, choose Wendy's. Drinking, driving crashes kill and injure over 7,000 people in B.C. each year. One half of all drivers who die are impaired. Three quarters of the dead or injured are in the drinking driver's vehicle. Why didn't their friends stop them? What about the hosts or the waiter? Why didn't anyone who saw them call us? We might have stopped them. You might have saved their lives. Counterattack drinking driving. There's heart in this land. There and all we do That's where our hands cross the country Reach for the blue And when we get together It's a taste that's clean and true So when you call When you call Then you call for the blue You know it's gotta be blue That's why you call for the blue Presenting the Meow Tones. Meow, 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 meow,
all over Canada, cats are singing the praises of Meow Mix brand cat food because only Meow Mix has the three flavors cats love best. Tuna, liver, and chicken. And tastes so good, cats ask for it by name. Meow, meow, meow. In perfect harmony. Meow. Here's the two main men who cleaned up Jerry Morrow and Bad News Allen. You know, I was standing back there watching this match, and it brought back some, some back flashes so some of the stuff I did. But I was sort of, my blood was starting to boil to see these two men up here, what they did to that Hubert Glant, and then what they did to Leo out here. But, I mean, Hubert, the man is really injured. Okay, this is a sport, you know. But these guys come out here, they want to hurt, they want to injure, they want to maim. But I tell you one thing, if they got any guts, especially with that Carrie Brown, the Cabbage Patch kid, if they got any guts, to come out here next week, the three of them, Jerry Morrow, I think Leo, he'll be feeling a little better, but Hubert, he, he'll be out for a while. And myself, we'll take these three idiots and we're going to teach them a lesson once and for all. If they want to break rules, we'll break rules. If they want to wrestle fair and square, we'll wrestle fair and square. But I guarantee you one thing, it won't be on three on one. And to put a little spice to the game here, we're going to have an elimination match. Whoever, whoever gets pinned here, they're going to have to get pinned in the middle, they're going to have to leave the ring. So that may be three on one, and maybe two against two, and maybe three against three. But somebody's going to leave here. And I guarantee you one thing, our team is going to be in the middle here, and we're going to pin these guys, we're going to ship them off once and for all, and we're going to get some justice in this ring. Well, bad news, Alan said it in the following manner. If you guys have got guts, you'll have Jer uh, Kerry Brown join you. And it'll be a six-man elimination tag. Can you handle it? Well, once again, Ed, the don't winners, want to talk about it. The huh? winners prevail. We're still the champions. That's all that matters. We got the belts. We got everything we want in this world. If they want a six-man elimination, that's fine with the Memphis Mafia. That's fine with the Honky Tonk Man and Ron because we like six. We had six eggs over easy this morning for breakfast. I got six old ladies. I got six Cadillacs and I got six diamond rings right here, Ed. So let me tell you all about six. They want eliminations, they can have it. We'll eliminate them one by one and there'll be three of us standing in the ring. Myself, Ron Starr, and Carrie Brown. Kind of like the Holocaust, you know, six, six, six. You get my meaning, Ed? You know oh, yeah. I mean? All right, well, let me tell you something, people. We don't care. Uh, you know, I can't speak for Mr. Brown. I can't promise these people that Mr. Brown's going to come up here and be our partner in a six-man tag team match. But personally, we don't care because we don't need them. We proved to everybody sitting in TV land and everybody in this building that we can stop any combination, whether it be a heart attack, whether it be the British Bulldogs. We can even stop Bad News Allen, the impossible, something they said couldn't be done. Will we beat him down to his knees? just where he belongs at my feet on his knees now Alan if you want to be a turncoat and you want to stick your nose in our business fine come on in shut up nobody wants any help from you we don't need it now if you want to stick your nose in our business and make it an elimination match fine but the only thing we request Ed is that it is an elimination match either by pinning the man or a submission none of this over-the-top rope crap we want to hurt somebody for now on Every time we get on television, we're going to hurt somebody, and we're going to keep on hurting them. Remember, Ed, the winners, and still the champions. Woo! Jim Davies, come in here. I don't know if you've ever seen a six-man elimination tag, but that ought to be a zinger. It should be a dandy, and I'll tell you, Honky Tonk Wayne and Rotten Ron Star are going to have their hands full. Yes, indeed. I am certain of that. And with Kerry Brown joining them, I don't know that Kerry can add much to their routine. I don't think so. And I'll tell you, when they have to deal with Bad News Allen, and this is the second coming of Bad News Allen, they're in for a good one. Okay, Chip Davies, it's been a pleasure being with you this week. We look forward to seeing you next week at this same time. But in the meantime, and in between time, that's it. Another edition of Stampede Wrestling. Bye-bye now. Bye. Tonight, following SCTV, the master of late night welcomes celebrity filmmakers like Bette Midler, Andrea Martin, and Catherine O'Hara. It's the David Letterman Holiday Film Festival. It's a special...